Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're reviewing the Reebok Floatride Energy 3 after 100 miles. Okay, so I basically, I got these um, kind of start of the year. Um, actually I bought them last November 2021. Um, but I didn't actually start running in these till January uh, 2022 this year. Um, I've now covered 100 miles in them, so I thought I'd do a quick review in terms of how I found them. Um, what's good, what's bad. Yeah, so basically I started running these uh, certainly this year, uh, January time. I've now done obviously 100 miles, 160k um, in these. Um, but yeah, so let's start with the review. Um, so basically start with the, uh, the outsole. Um, I basically run on a range of different surfaces, predominantly tarmac, roads, pavements, etc. A bit of light trail and grass. Um, but as you can see, like there's very, very little wear um, on all the uh, protrusions. Um, it's looking good at the minute, the grip's great, even in um, kind of wet conditions, um, the grip's not too bad at all. Dry conditions, the grip's unbelievable, um, never had any issues with this. Um, but like I said, for the outsole, um, after 100 miles it looks, so there's, there's mild um, abrasions on the, on the forefoot bit, but um, as you can see even the detail on the protrusions is still um, kind of there. Same on the other foot, I've not got a any more wear on the other foot. Um, so yeah, so the outsole in terms of overall, the grip's great. Um, never had any issues with, with the grip, etc. Um, so I've, if I had to give it a score out of 10, um, outsole's got to get at least like an eight, 8 out of 10, I'd give it. Um, like I said, maybe on really wet conditions, maybe the protrusions, um, they're a bit too uh, a bit too big and therefore you get a bit of slippage, maybe off the toe off. Um, but I say overall, if you're, if you're landing midfoot or even um, full foot or heel, heel striker, then you have no issues whatsoever. So I'd give it an um, 8 out of 10 for the outsole. Okay, so this is the float ride foam that we've got used in the uh, float ride energy lineup. Um, it is um, kind of squishy. Um, it's, it's a fairly soft foam compared to some of the other shoes I have. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty soft foam, but it's um, but I like the ride to be honest. Um, the um the foam's done really well. Um, I'd say it kind of bottoms out a little bit after a certain distance. So I find it's best in the um I use these generally now. It's a daily trainer for me, the, the Reebok Float Ride, but um I use it for generally distances over say five or six or seven kilometers and up to say half marathon, but even a half marathon you could probably do with something a bit a bit more firm. Uh, but I've done half marathon in, in this trainer. Um, it's fine, but yeah, the, the sweet spot for me is between like seven or eight k up to say fourteen, fifteen k. So what's that? That's um, four or five miles up to say ten miles is, is the sweet spot for this. Then it's great. Uh, the responsiveness is there, the squishiness, softness is there. Once you get past that window of um, ten plus miles, fifteen, sixteen k, um, they, they just get a bit soft, and your feet could do that bit more, bit more. Um, Firmness or even a bit more foam just because it feels like you're bottoming out, bottoming out a little bit after that, after that amount of time. Um, but yeah, so overall, um, midsole, like I said, as you can see again, no uh, no creasing, um, it feels exactly the same as it did when it came out of the box, um, 100 miles in. So again, midsole, some, some small, small drawbacks, it's not for really, really long distances, so. Um, with the distance issue in terms of it's better in a, in a shorter range up to 10 miles I'd give uh, the foam probably 7, 7 out of 10 Okay, moving on now to the upper um, Okay, the upper is pretty good Okay, so it's um, it's very breathable as you can see, you can kind of almost see through the yellow stuff is kind of the inner um, inner lining um, it's a fully, uh, fully gusseted tongue which is the yellow bit um, is the, that's the attachment on either side of the tongue. Um, like I said, the upper is very breathable. Um, it's kind of almost see-through, really large, uh, I don't know if you can see, really large um, perforations for the air to come through. Um, I'll try and do some close-up shots, um, just so you can see. Um, so yeah, breathability-wise, pretty good. It doesn't, I've run it in warm weather and I don't feel like my feet are overheating, so there's no real overheating issues. Um, some people say it runs a bit long, the shoe. Um, I've got my usual size 11s and they're fine. I maybe could have gone to 10.5, but Matt felt a bit snug. Yeah, so I... the only um, 
The only thing I'd put, pick up about the upper is probably the lacing. So the laces are, are rigid, um, they're not elasticated whatsoever. Um, the very, the very just uh, kind of stiff laces. Uh, but I said the lacing is the issue. Um, the um, eyelet chain's not got a massive hole, which is is fine. Um, but generally, it's these last two holes, so I use a I use a runner's knot. Those that are familiar with runner's knot, you do a loop to the top, and then obviously cross your laces over uh, through the loops, and then you cinch it in, and it gets you a bit more of a, a better lockdown at the top. Um, I never have it too tight, but yeah, it's just for whatever reason the really really small circular holes. Uh, for the last two holes and I find when you cinch it it doesn't kind of glide through you almost it almost feels um at friction um at sandpaper where you've literally got to force it through almost like you're making a bigger hole as you're doing it um that just doesn't feel great when you when you're locking it down every time I don't know if the still give in at some point um I said I've had no issues once it's locked down it's fine it just doesn't feel like some of my other shoes you can just get a nice lockdown quite quick the laces glide through the holes. Um, so that would be the only kind of negative I'd pick up on in terms of the upper. I said breathability is pretty good. Um, durability is pretty good. It's got no issues, no snags, no tears. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just lacing. So again, um, it's not. It's, it's pretty wide in the, in the toe box as well, so you never feel completely snug, which again, some people say it runs long. I think it's just a, a kind of a big, a big issue, wide shoe. Um, so for the upper overall, um, probably just purely on the laces, uh, maybe the fact it's a bit spacious, um, I'd probably give it again a 7 out of 10 for the upper. Okay, so upper done, midsole done, outsole done. Um, the last two I'm going to pick up on is durability and value. So let's do durability first. Like I said, we're 100 miles in. Uh, durability prediction, like I said, they feel and uh, look um, almost like out of the box. Um, like I said, the midsole hasn't died, there's no wear and tear whatsoever. There's a tiny bit of wear on the bottom, but I expect after 100 miles, but very, 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 very minimal. Um, so durability prediction, like I said 100 in. Um, me personally, I'm going to try and get these to uh, at least probably a thousand kilometers, so 600 miles plus. Um, plus um, so I'm going to give that actually an eight out of 10. Um, I think it will do that at least, probably even more. Mm. If some of the foam holds up, I think the outsole is going nowhere. Um, the upper is it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's um, it's got no more time to wear and take. It feels pretty durable, um, breathable. Like I said, so I think overall durability should be at least five out of six hundred plus. We'll give that an eight out of ten. So this um, Reebok Floatride Energy Three, um, it was seventy five um, pounds when it um, when I went to buy it. Um, it's obviously reduced since because the Reebok Floatride Energy 4 has since come out um, and that's currently on sale for £75 of Reebok. Um, I think it's a very similar shoe, same outsole, same midsole, just a, maybe a revised upper, slightly thinner, um, more, um, kind of, yeah, thinner, uh, more synthetic upper. Um, um, so that's currently on sale for 75 um, I didn't buy these for 75 Um I used um, discount, I discount code and I entered that uh, last November. Um, I got these £54. Pounds. Um, I think you can probably do that with a, with a Reebok Energy Float Ride 4. Um, now, if you, if you find a discount code on the Reebok website, you can generally get them for less than, than RRP. There's always discounts, there's always reductions for some reason. But Reebok, for me, Reebok are one of the cheapest, um, and not just cheap, but probably the one of the, most, the best value for money shoes. Um, like this, this particular shoe can, can compete with like other more expensive shoes. Yes, it's not going to compete with... 200 plus pounds pair of trainers but in terms of daily trainers you could pay double 75 i 150 plus um and you might get a slightly better shoe but it's not twice as good in my eyes so in terms of value for money uh reebok shoes generally a very good value um for 54 pounds and i'm going to get like i said five or 600 miles out of these shoes and they're comfortable and they do a lot of um a lot of different things so i didn't mention that in the midsole and um, as a daily trainer and that for that price it, it does do almost do anything you can do a quick 5k in it yes it won't be a pb but it'll be a it does get moving i've run paces um i've run up to, i would say between four and a half minute k's the slower and the slower six minute k's in these um it does do a, a lot of different things um i didn't mention that on the midsole part but um like i said it is very versatile so in terms of an overall value um like i said for 54 pounds when i pick these up for again you can get the new um, for for probably a similar price, the seventy five pound, and even if you paid full price, seventy five pounds, they're still a real good value trainer. Um, yeah, so, so for value, I, I can't really knock it. I, I have to give it a nine out of ten because, um, I say for that price, um, and for what it can do in terms of how good the quality of the shoe is, um, 
it, it is really hard to beat in terms of that value. Yes, you can buy more expensive trains, and yes, they are better, but how much better and how much more are they? So, um, personally, for value, this is a really great train, and nine out of 10, I'll give it. Okay, so total scores, um, I'll pop it on the screen if, um, if I've added my maths right and I've added my scores up. Um, this should give this a 39 out of 50 overall. Um, and like I said, for a £54, well, like £54 with a, a £75 trainer, um, uh, for £75 running shoe, um, that's a pretty good score. Um, like I said, I do think um, think this is one of the a really underrated shoes. Yes, some people are aware of it. Some people mention it. It's in a similar category to the uh, uh, Puma Nitro range. Um, but again, the Puma Nitro range is probably slightly more expensive. You can't often get um, discounts. It's full price, etc. But they're a similar, similar trainer. Um, I've never run in the um, Puma Liberate Nitro or the Puma City Nitro. I've, I've not run in either of those two trainers. Um, maybe I will in the future. Um, but yeah, um, overall, really, really solid shoe. Um, it's my go-to daily trainer. If I'm running anything more than a 5K, I'll generally grab this trainer. Um, I said. Okay, so that's, that wraps up my review for the Reebok Floatride NZ3. Um, again, that's just, this is all my personal opinions. Um, I'm not endorsed by anybody, I'm not sponsored by anybody, no one gets to say what I'm going to say. Uh, this is just me giving my feedback on what I found to the shoe. Um, if you want to put in the comments, um, if you find anything different, um, if your use of the trainer, uh, the running shoe is, is, very, is different from my view, um, if you find any issues that I haven't come across and vice versa, if you found uh, no issues whatsoever and I found issues with some things, Again, drop it in the comments. If you've got any questions, again, drop it in the comments. I'm happy to respond to any questions you put in. Um, but overall, I think it's a really solid running shoe. And for the value, that's the main positive of the shoe in terms of the value you get for what... The money you pay for what you get, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck. Um, yeah, so if you like what you've seen, drop us a like, um, subscribe, share with any of your running friends. Um, it does really help the channel. I much appreciate it. Um, and yeah. I'll do a uh, I'll do a couple more of my uh, rotation reviews. So my Hink, uh, my Hulk Ring Calm Two uh, review will come up soon, as will my Trail Shoe, my New Balance Neutral V4. Um, so yeah, look out for them. Um, thanks for watching. See you next time.